Many of us are smokers and many of us have quit and others have never smoked. But what are the facts? Well, in the global uh, statistics, about 50% of young men and 10% of young women become smokers and relatively few stop. Uh, the annual tobacco-related deaths in 2010 were 5 million. 5 million people died of smoking causes in 2010, and it's expected to go to 10 million within a few decades. As these younger smokers who are smoking more and more reach middle and older age. Uh, the population's growing, so that's why there's more deaths. And also in some large populations, few people smoked in the past, or few people smoked a lot of cigarettes in the past, and many more are smoking now. So in the 20th century, which just passed, the 20th century, there were 100 million deaths related to tobacco. And most of them were in so-called developed countries. And it's estimated that if smoking patterns consistently arise, as they have, tobacco will kill about one billion people wow. this century. Unreal. One billion Unreal. people will die from smoking-related causes. And most of them are in lower- and middle-income countries. And half of the deaths occur before the age of 70. Yeah. So it's telling you before the age of 70 that people's lives are going to be cut. One of the main deterrents of smoking is price. And uh, like it or not, and I don't like taxes, I hate taxes, and most of us hate taxes, but price is the main key deterrent against smoking. So to reduce smoking by a third in the world requires the cost of cigarettes to double. I recently was in Russia and saw patients there, yeah. and I was surprised that in Russia, and this is talking about it, low-income um, countries, cigarettes are cheap and people smoke. In yeah. Russia, a pack of cigarettes is a dollar. Well, do we have a phone call to take? Is we do, yeah. You know what? I think we got Herb back on the okay, line. Okay, so let me speak to Herb, and I want to continue talking about Let's smoking see, um, and how we can save maybe your life, yeah. your friend's life. We'll be back in a minute. Let's, Let's uh, talk to Herb. Yeah, hopefully we can hear him. Herb, how are you? Dr. Wiedemann. How I are want... you, Herb? Yes. How's Bertha? Everything is fine. Let's talk about, the listeners don't know you. I know you, and I know your wife, and you know me, and you know my family. I took care of your wife. How many years ago did your wife have that brain tumor? Fifteen years. Fifteen ago. years, and she came with a massive uh, meningioma of the brain, right? Right. And you heard about us actually on the radio, right? Yes. And you got in your truck, and you drove to me, right, without telling, no appointment. You came in, right? Right. And uh, we talked about the treatment. I examined the films. We found this meningioma. It was a massive one deep in your wife's brain, right? Right. And she got the treatment 15 years ago, right? Correct. So tell me what happened 15 years later. How is she doing, Herb? Everything is fine, and I must say this. Dr. Lederman, I carry a picture of you in my wallet, and I pray for you. Well, I need some prayers. You did a wonderful thing for us. Well, you did something wonderful for your wife. You discovered the option. Surgery on her brain would have been devastating. She had a very big tumor, almost the size of a fist, deep in the brain. Yes, it's gone. Yeah, and if she had surgery on that uh, back 15 years ago, she'd probably be a goner. You probably wouldn't have had all those years of uh, good life with your wife. Correct. <coughs> Tell us, uh, for listeners who don't know about brain radio surgery, we did fractionated brain radio surgery. It means we give a little bit each time with a non-invasive frame, so it's not like the gamma knife. There's no screws in the brain. There's no hospital stay, right? She came in, got her treatment, and went home, correct? Correct. And that's what we like. We don't like the complications of being in the hospital. We don't like the screws in the head. We know if we divide up the dose of radio surgery to the brain or the body, we avoid the complications. And she had none, right? Correct. So tell me more. Tell me what was in your head when you heard my voice on the radio 15 years ago. How could you think about trusting a voice on the radio? Well, very simple. We went to a well-known surgeon, and he wanted to cut like yesterday. And we heard you coming home on the radio, and we went to you and said, this is where we're going to go. She was so bad, my wife, 
So we arranged a bed in a van to get to you. And, and it worked, and it's wonderful. Tell us how, uh, just to, so the listeners know, tell us what she felt and the experiences, because, you know, I don't know what happens at home for a patient who has brain radio surgery. Tell us from from a home view and from a husband's view and a family yes. view, tell us she what she felt, what she experienced compared to uh, what surgery would have been. Yes. We were in a hospital, and the hospital said, you have to leave because we don't have a brain surgeon. And so we had to go home, and she was like comatose, not aware of things. And uh, within a few days, we heard about you after the surgeon, and he, he was going to cut, and we did not take that route. And you worked on her. In fact, you told the hospital, let her stay, I'll be responsible. And you did that, and it worked. And she is still here listening right now. How old is Bertha now? Oh, my. 80. 80 years old. 80. So 80. we treated her when she was 65. Yep, yep, yep. And she had a meningioma. Our success rate, we follow all our patients, and our success rate, which means the tumor stops, or shrinks or goes away. This kind of brain tumor is about 97%. Yes. So when I invited you in and told you I think we could help, I knew that 97% of the time that we would stop or shrink the, that tumor. And I knew that's higher than with surgery, and she avoided all the complications of surgery. Yes, we actually came in. It took you about an hour, I think four times, one week apart, and that was it. There was no anything, no hurt, no pain, no nothing. And what advice would you have for other people who have brain tumors or cancers? How would you, what would you tell them? Dr. Lederman, you are the one. And I am quite certain that many people would argue with you, but for me, you are the one. You saved my wife. Why do you think they'd argue with me? Why do you think that is? Because they do not want to go down your route. Why? You have a whole new system, and it surpassed whatever they had, and there was much argumentation. I know about that, and you stood your ground. As far as I'm concerned, you are the way to go, no other way. Well, I appreciate your vote of confidence, and uh, please give my regards to Bertha, and uh, stay in touch. It's great to hear your voice. You have a very distinctive voice. As soon as I heard Herb and your voice, I know exactly who you were. <laughs> and we are close to our patients. Uh, I know you've called me over family matters over the years and other issues, and uh, I wish you and Bertha all the best. As do I. It's great to hear from you, Herb. Right. Okay. All right, God bless you, and stay in touch. Call us back in a while and let us know how she's progressing, but I'm sure she's going to be great. Okay, thank you. All right, God bless you. Thanks, thank you. Okay, I want to talk about, and if any other callers have questions, call us at... Um, 800. Eight, yep. eight, go ahead. 800-848-9222. Yeah, we're live in the WABC studio, so We'd we're happy to... to uh, take your calls. We're happy to uh, listen, take your calls, and hopefully help. So I want to talk more a little bit about smoking. So there's large studies about smoking in uh, England, uh, United States, Japan, that have looked at the effects of mortality from smoking. And all the studies show that in middle age, from 30 to 69, mortality among cigarette smokers is two to three times higher than in non-smokers. And on average, a smoker has a reduction in lifespan by 10 years. So, I mean, my gosh, you want 10 years of life? Yeah. Don't smoke. Right. You want 10 years of life? Stop smoking. <clears throat> what a gift. Life is such a gift. Yeah. And you can get it so easily by stopping smoking. And it, the statistics are there. You can look at it. And the sooner you s stop smoking, if you stop smoking today, get your loved one to stop smoking today, you're going to be given a gift of years of life. Now, many of the people who are killed from cigarettes are in middle age, which means they lose many years of life. So on average, those killed in middle age by smoking lose about 20 
years of life expectancy compared to those people who have never smoked. So you've got the people that die in middle life, they lose on average 20 years, and other people 10 years from smoking. Now, if you stop at age 30, you will gain 10 years of life. If you stop at age 40, you will gain nine years of life. If you stop even at age 50, you gain six years of life compared to those who continue smoking. So it's very important to stop smoking. Stop smoking. Around 100 years ago, smoking was uncommon. Uh, 100 years ago, on average, smokers only had about one cigarette. But in recent years, people are smoking a lot more, and therefore the complication rates are a lot more. And also it takes years for the complications of smoking to manifest itself. So yeah, an 18-year-old can smoke and feel cool about themselves, but by 38 or 48, he's getting emphysema, he's getting the complications, heart disease, and increased risk of lung cancer, throat cancer, bladder cancer, kidney cancer, leukemia, and other smoking-related diseases. So it's known that one ton of tobacco yields one million cigarettes and causes one death. One ton of tobacco causes one death from a million cigarettes. One trillion cigarettes will cause about a million deaths a year. So again, even though smoking in 1910 only consumed one cigarette, in 1934 cigarettes, in 1950 10 cigarettes, it's higher today. Yeah. And in 1950 smoking related deaths were 12 percent of all deaths in america right now it's 33 percent wow 33 percent of deaths are smoking related that's 33 percent uh 33 percent of deaths that could be avoidable it's totally avoidable yeah. so yeah. it's a plea please stop smoking if there's smokers in your home get them to stop smoking if it's dad or mom get them to stop smoking stop smoking even today will give you the gift of life for many years to come. So if you have questions about it, please call. If you want to come in and talk about it, you're welcome to talk about it. But we really are trying to provide the best possible information for you, even if it's not popular. We want you to live healthily. Our number here is 800-848-9222. We have a word from our sponsor, and then we'll be back with more cases and more news. For cancer treatment, most prefer effective, non-invasive, well-tolerated outpatient therapy. At Radio Surgery New York, the Radio Surgery Pioneers, that's our goal too. We're first in America, first in New York, first for you with body radio surgery. We hit your cancer from head to toe with no cutting, no bleeding. We have decades of experience with primary and metastatic, large or small cancers. Cancer treatment with possibly a second chance for you, even if chemo, radiation, or surgery didn't work or isn't tolerated. Our goals are the best results and quality of life. Hi, I'm Dr. Gil Lederman. For a free booklet and DVD, call 212 Choices. 212 Choices for a fresh second opinion. Most insurances, Medicare, Medicaid accepted. We're super convenient, Broadway and 38th in Manhattan. Hyperthermia 2. To hit your cancer, call 212 Choices. 212 Choices for Radio Surgery New York. For prostate cancer treatment, results and quality of life matter. Hi, I'm Dr. Gil Lederman from Radio Surgery New York. Our enviable record includes treating thousands with prostate cancer. Critical to every man with prostate cancer and their loved ones is quality of life, urinary and sexual, and great treatment data while avoiding surgery. Treatment here is outpatient, with most insurances, Medicare, Medicaid accepted. First in America with radio surgery for cancers from head to toe, we have the expertise to hit the cancer. Our fresh second opinion could change your life. For prostate cancer treatment, call 212 Choices. 212 Choices. Radio Surgery New York. Super conveniently located in Manhattan at 38th and Broadway, hits the prostate cancer. Call 212 Choices, 212 Choices, to hit the prostate cancer. Welcome back to the Radio Surgery Hour. This is Rob Redstone here with Dr. Gil Lederman at the WABC Studios in the heart of New York City. We're just a few steps from the Radio Surgery New York Cancer Treatment Center on Broadway and 38th Street. 
Dr. Lederman, the leading cancer expert, treats prostate cancer non-invasively. He was the